In one hadith, Hamad ibn Uthman, and in another similar hadith, Abu Ubaidah, both companions of an Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam, they narrate this beautiful hadith from an Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam in describing to us what the book of Fatima is. What is Mus'haf Fatima? Hamad ibn Uthman and Abu Ubaidah, they narrate, they say that <coughs> an Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam told them, when the Prophet, peace be upon him, passed away, Fatima Zahra alayhi salam did not live for long. She lived for about 75 days after the departure of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. Fatima Zahra alayhi salam became engulfed with grief, sadness, and sorrow. She was extremely grief-stricken after the death of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. No one in the world was saddened and struck with grief like Fatima Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent one of his angels. One hadith says it was Jibra'il. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Jibra'il to go and give comfort to Fatima Know the greatness of Fatima. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends his greatest angel or one of his greatest angels to go and comfort Fatima to give her consolation, to speak with her, to lift her out of that immense grief that she was experiencing. In order to lift her out of that grief, the angel Jibra'il would speak to Fatima and he would share with her a lot of information. He would give her knowledge. He would tell her where the Prophet is, how the Prophet is, what is the status of the Prophet? And that would give comfort to Fatima. And Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib salam would record everything that the angels were sharing with Fatima al-Zahra salam. He would record it all until it became into a book. And this is the book of Fatima salam. It is truly an amazing book. Now there are some Muslims from other schools of thought that will attack the followers of Ahl al-Bayt and say you, Shia, you the followers of Ahl al-Bayt are taking it a little bit too far. What is this exaggeration and idolization that you are ascribing to Fatima al-Zahra This is heresy. Fatima was not a messenger. She was not a prophet. How can you claim that she received revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Are you claiming that you have a second Quran? You have another Qur'an that you received from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the names of Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam was Al-Muhaddatha. The one who was spoken to. And Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam describes the meaning of this word. The Imam alayhi salam says Fatima was given this title, this name, because the angels would communicate with her just as the angels would communicate with Maryam Just as they would speak to Maryam, they would speak to Fatima and they would, and they would say to her, Oh Fatima, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has purified you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen you over the ladies of the world. Oh Fatima, worship God, prostrate and bow in your salah. In fact, all of the Imams of Ahl al-Bayt were muhaddathin. They were spoken to by the angels. In one hadith, Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib salam, says, I and my progeny, the Imams of Ahl al-Bayt, are all muhaddath. We have been spoken to by the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sulaim ibn Qais, one of the companions of Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen salam, he says, one day I asked Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr, Muhammad, the son of Abu Bakr, which you really don't hear about when you hear what other schools of thought have to say. Isn't this man the son of your first Khalifa? How come you don't mention him like you mention others? How come there is absolutely no mention of him? It's because he loved Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib. Look at the oppression and injustice towards the Arabic. Whoever was close to them and followed them and loved them, you find no mention of them in other schools of thought. Sulaim ibn Qais says, I asked Muhammad the son of Abu Bakr one day, 
I told him, is Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib a muhaddath? Is he spoken to? He said, yes, of course he is. And not only is he spoken to, but Fatima alayhi salam, even though she's not a prophet, she's not a messenger, but she was also spoken to. The Quran demonstrates to us that one does not necessarily have to be a messenger or prophet to receive revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's not an exaggeration to say that Fatima alayhi salam received revelation. When the mother of Musa received revelation according to the Quran. When Maryam alayhi salam received revelation according to the Quran. When Sarah the wife of Ibrahim received revelation according to the Holy Quran. Is it too much for us to accept that Fatima, the very daughter of the greatest messenger of Allah, would also receive revelation? Where is the exaggeration in that? Where is the problem in that? Isn't Fatima alayhi salam above these three other women who received revelation? If they could receive revelation, why can't she? Even if you refer to books like Bukhari, they demonstrate to you that Fatima alayhi salam is better than Maryam. There is a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari which says, Fatima Sayyidatu Nisa'i Ahl al-Jannah. Fatima is the leader of the women of paradise. I ask you, is Maryam in paradise or no? Isn't she amongst the women of paradise? If Fatima is the leader of the women of paradise, isn't she higher in rank in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than Maryam And if Maryam could receive revelation, as confirmed by the Holy Quran, then why cannot Fatima alayhi salam receive revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Where is the harm in believing that? Where is the heresy? There is another hadith by Al-Hakim al Naysaburi, a prominent Sunni scholar. He narrates a hadith, he says, Aisha is the one who narrates this hadith. She says, when the Prophet, peace be upon him, shortly before he passed away, when he was on his deathbed, he said to Fatima alayhi salam, because she was very upset to lose her father, he told her, Oh Fatima, be satisfied. Are you not satisfied because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made you the best woman out of all the women of the world? And you shall be the leader of the women in paradise. And you are the leader of the believing women. This demonstrates that Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam was the best woman Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ever created. Therefore, where is the harm in believing that she received revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So this book, Mus'haf Fatima, the, the book of Fatima alayhi salam, what exactly does it contain? The angels who spoke to her, what did they speak in those books? What is the theme of the book of Fatima? <laughs> The primary theme of the book of Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam is that it contains all past events, current events, and future events. Everything that Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam says is contained in the book of Fatima. Another aspect that is contained in the book of Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam is the will of Fatima alayhi salam with respect to her children, the Imams of Ahl al-Bayt. And also the endowments that she had. This will is contained in the book of Fatima, peace be upon her. Also some minor Islamic laws. Even Imam al-Sadiq says, Hatta arsh al -khaj. You know, if someone injures you or scratches you, there's a retribution money that you have to pay. If you scratch someone, if you injure someone, you have to seek their satisfaction, forgiveness, and you also have to pay them. It's called Arsh in Islamic law. And Imam al-Sadiq says, even that is mentioned in the book of Fatima. What else is mentioned in this book? The status of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. His rank in paradise, with all the details, is mentioned in the book of Fatima. All future events are mentioned in the book of Fatima al-Zahra, salawatullahi alayha. Especially the events that would happen to the progeny of Fatima al-Zahra till the day of judgment is all contained in this amazing book. 
Now, Al Imam Sadiq is very clear that this book is not a second Quran as some ignorant Muslims might think. The Imam says it contains nothing from the Holy Quran. Don't confuse it with the Quran. This has nothing to do with the Holy Quran. The Holy Quran has its own status. It is the highest book God ever has given to humanity. The book of Fatima is not a second Quran. And it's not to be confused with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now the problem is, you will find some ignorant people, they will say, well it's called Mus'haf Fatima. And the word Mus'haf means Quran. So you Shias are claiming that this is the Quran of Fatima. Unfortunately, these people have not understood the meaning of the word Mus'haf in the Arabic language. In Arabic, the word Mus'haf simply means papers stacked in a book. When you have papers and you compile them into a book, this is called Mus'haf. And the reason why the Holy Quran today is called Mus'haf is because it is also a book. However, if you refer to the Holy Quran and the ahadith, the narrations of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, during his lifetime, never was the Holy Quran referred to as the Mus'haf. This was a later term that the, Muslim, that the Muslims used to describe the Holy Quran. Otherwise, in the Holy Quran, the Quran is not referred to as Mus'haf. The Prophet, peace be upon him, never referred to the Holy Quran as being the Mus'haf. This is a later terminology that the Muslims used to describe the Holy Quran. So when the Imams of Ahlul Bayt say Mus'haf Fatima, it simply means the book of Fatima. Which the angels gave her the knowledge, Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib would write it into a book. 